So um, mostly in that TED Ed animation, the goal of that was really to talk about the spectrum of, of responses and priorities that people place on doing a task or tending to some cognitive demand in the face of having to deal with pain. So the video, you know, I really wanted to get across the idea that there was a, a large intersubject variability, and, and this is based on the work in, in the lab. And so the idea being that some people either can naturally mind wander away from a painful stimulus, while others, you know, have very focused attention on it, versus another type of balancing of these demands where you're trying to actually do some sort of attention demanded task, and, and how does that performance um, become impacted by pain, and most importantly, how the brain responses that we found match that behavior. You know, initially we did say that we had a bimodal situation where we had people that we called P-types, that were people that, were, that focus on the pain and so their performance in a task uh, diminish, and then A types that people who focus on their attention to a task and actually their performance could sometimes even uh, improve when we delivered pain because sometimes they said uh, anecdotally that you know the pain made me focus more on getting the task right. They tried to keep pain out of their mind. But when you, when you really look at the data, what the behavioral data really shows is that it's a spectrum, and there are people more at one end and the other. And there are some people in that kind of fuzzy middle, but the majority of people are at one end of the spectrum or the other. The variability um, in this instance, it's called a regional bold variability, and it just looks at how the bold response, and not to a stimulus, but at resting state. So the bold profile, the blood oxygen level detection signal that we measure in fMRI, how that waxes and wanes over, let's say, a five or ten minute period. Um, in terms of the regional uh, signal variability, actually, uh, our first study is, is now in press, so we're excited about that. And that uh, did show that when you have a greater variability in the signal within an area of the brain, we found that that linked to people's uh, pain sensitivity. So high variability was linked to people being less pain sensitive and also to people being more of the A type than the P type, actually. So, uh, so that's, that's hot off the press. Well, I guess the short answer is you don't, <laughs> um, because when, you, when you're looking at the fMRI response, you're really looking at the final outcome of whatever is going on in that individual, and where the, the origin of that response is really something you can't identify with fMRI. You would need other techniques to kind of uh, dissect that apart. But I should note that people talk about a, a, you know, a psychological source, but the reality is everything you're thinking and feeling and experiencing is in the brain. So is, is something any more or less real if the original trigger for the response comes from the periphery or comes from within the brain? So it's a distinction, but it's sometimes a distinction that has a negative connotation to it. And I think we need to be very aware of that. So for instance, somebody who has post-stroke pain, the origin is that they've had a stroke in their brain. There's, there's some damage in the brain and that's generating some signals. It's no less real than if you, you know, stub your toe.